Hey, Pete here from RC Car Action Magazine, and this is the Tamiya Land Rover Defender 90. This is the latest release on the Cross Country, or CC01 chassis. A very unique design for Tamiya, which incorporates an independent front suspension with a solid axle rear suspension, and this chassis that has molded in fender wells. They've done quite a few models on this uh, platform before. There's a Tamiya Land Cruiser, they've done a Jeep Wrangler, a few other models, uh, Mitsubishi Pajero. Um, and as you can expect from Tamiya, this is a super detailed vehicle. You've got a great looking body with lots of injection molded parts to go on there. And in addition to what's in the box, and in addition to genuine Tamiya paints that we'll use for this buildup, I have got a whole bag of Tamiya hop-up goodies to go on this CC01. So let's not waste any more time here. We'll get into an unboxing, and then we'll start wrenching on the Land Rover Defender 90. Alrighty, so let's see what's cooking with the Land Rover Defender 90 CC01. To me, always very efficient with the boxing. Ordinarily, I like to uh, unbox stuff off camera to make sure I know what I'm going to talk about. But uh, with the Tamiya stuff, it's hard to get it back in the way it came from the factory. So I'm going in cold. And the first thing we see is the parts tree for the detailed parts of the body. So we've got a uh, spare tire cover, grill, uh, headlight buckets. Um, I assume these are roof rails over here. But as always, injection molded parts from Tamiya just... Super high quality, great looking stuff. More parts here, rear view mirrors, more clips for uh, LED wire routing, I imagine. This is the uh, bar work that goes in front of the windshield, I think, but we'll figure it out with the instructions, of course. Bag of stuff, I can see a Mabuchi motor in there. Well, let's open this bag up. Of course, ordinarily I would methodically go through the instructions and unpack things as required, but in unboxing mode, we'll just tear the bags open. Shock parts. Bag D with shock oil, springs, bladders, O-rings. Bag C, some very nice looking castings for the transmission gears and whatnot. Sorry about the glare with the lights. Steering hubs. More transmission gears. To me, always builds these gearboxes for like 6S LiPo power, but uh, for the Mabuchi 540 and the 2S LiPo that we're gonna put in here, these gears are way overbuilt and they should last forever. The classic Mabuchi motor. we got some strips of uh, double-sided tape, body clips, various O-rings, body posts. I know it's exciting. Hardware and some bushings. The A bag with lots of hardware and looks like differential internals in there. I'm trying to get it so the glare doesn't blind you guys. Bag B, we've got some nicely finished drive shaft parts. I mean, it really does great finishes on stuff. I mean, every part that's either plated or has a black oxide coating or is painted, super nice. Here's the body. We've all seen a Lexion body before. This one, uh, you can see a parting line here where the, was that a parting line? Well, there's no undercut. I don't know if a full-size Land Rover would have a line there, so I guess it's a multi-piece mold. But I'm just nerding out on how molds get made. You can ignore this part of the unboxing. Here's a better look at the body. First class stuff, as always, from Tamiya. Put that down here. Here is the chassis. And this is a really fantastic piece of injection molding. One piece of plastic. You can see the lower half of the front gearbox is molded right in there. This is the well where the uh, gears will go inside the transmission 
front differential drops in here. Just amazing stuff that Tamiya does. And this was done a long time ago. This isn't a brand new, you know, chassis from Tamiya. They've always pushed the boundaries of what you can do with injection molding. Nice stuff. And lots of goodies in this bag. Here we've got a bumper, skid plate, motor mount, gearbox cover, other stuff. This bag has got the rear axle housing. There's your big transmission cover. Here's your axle housings. Looks like we've got some C-hubs. Uh, steering parts, servo saver. Let's take a look at these wheels. Really nice satin finish on these. Those look good. Tamiya did not mask off the plating where the glue would go. I'm not sure we need to even glue the tires on this model, but we'll see. But uh, great looking stuff, of course. And here are the tires. These are firm, feel almost like vinyl. A nice tread pattern on there. Realistic looking, not officially licensed. There's no uh, labeling on the sidewalls, but beautiful parts as always. And there is some more stuff in the bottom of the box. Here we have LEDs and the lighting junction box. A bunch more plastics, more plastics, bumpers, other parts. Here is the speed control. And this is the TBLEO2S. And you can run, of course, including Mabuchi brush motor, but if you want to upgrade to brushless, this speed control is ready to run it. And it's got some over, uh, protective film, not overspray film. We're not going to paint this, but I always like peeling this stuff off. Ah. So included speed control, that's nice. You get a long antenna tube. I don't think we'll need all that length with the 2.4 gigahertz radio will install. Get a manual, of course. Window masks. And a full set of decals. It looks like we've got these for the fender flares and uh, window moldings. Some nice graphics to put on the side, which they don't show on the box art, but I think I'll go ahead and put those on. Those look pretty cool. But that's what comes in the box for the Tamiya Land Rover Defender 90. And I'm going to change my camera setup here so I can start wrenching and show you guys how this thing goes together. It's a Tamiya model, so it should build very easily and be lots of fun to put together.